Welcome everybody to Grapple FK. We are covering the big one. UFC 257, Poirier v. McGregor 2. It should say 2 on the web UFC website. I've already... Another fuck up from the UFC. Yeah. The website guy. Fucking hell. Kill him. Um, 3 a.m. GMT. So not, not a good time for us. But a good time for the Americans. Um, so let, let's get into this. I mean, Connor's been away for a year. He most recently... What did he do recently? He's been in camp. Before that, he got his cock out on a yacht in the Mediterranean around September. That was big news. What was the context of that? Why did he get his cock out? I don't know. I think he just got his cock out and some women complained about him. Okay. And then he probably had to pay her a few million dollars, which he's been doing for a while now. Fair. Anyway, I don't know too much. I don't want to comment on it too much. That's what I read. It may be true. It may not be true. He's done some fucked up things over his career, but one thing that cannot be denied is he is a beast of a fighter. And I think a lot of people have forgotten this over the last few years. Um, so in terms of size, they're both the same size. McGregor's got a slight reach advantage. Let's get into this. Both strikers, number two against number 15. Andrew, what are your thoughts? This is obviously the second time they fought. People are hyping up Poirier saying yeah. that he's not the same fighter he was when they first met. He's bigger, he's more powerful, he's developed his skill set across different areas. So they're hyping up his boxing, they're saying he's a really good boxer. Um, I think maybe they're getting a little bit carried away. Um, you know, Poirier does have great boxing. It's great technical boxing. You know, I've, I've said that for, for a long time. Um, but let, let's just, this is probably a kickboxing match. And mostly a boxing match. Yeah. But let, let, let's just think about who is the better boxer here. If we're talking about traditional boxing, Poirier is the, tr- the traditional boxer. And if this was a boxing rules, Quinsby rules, Poirier probably wins. But this is not. Uh, this is MMA striking. It's a different beast. When you throw in the, the the nuances and dynamics of takedowns and kicks and everything, the striking game changes significantly. And yeah. Poirier is by far and away better at that than Poirier is. Um, And it seems as though certain people in the media and the fans need reminding of just what Conor McGregor has done and what he is doing in the octagon when he knocks people out. It's not like barges in and throws that left hand and boom, it's done. He's planning very uh, to provoke people to come forward to expose themselves so he counters. It's extremely intelligent boxing. Um, Dustin Poirier doesn't do any of that. Uh, And Poirier is not, sorry, Conor McGregor is not just a level above. He's a couple of levels above when it comes to striking. What do you think about that? I think they're both very good boxers. I think Conor McGregor is a better counter puncher. Um, I think his counter punching is probably some of the best in the UFC. Um, I think he's got better kicks, particularly to uh, spinning kicks and kicks to the midsection. Doesn't really kick to the legs that much. Um, but D- Dustin Poirier's uh, boxing, his striking has greatly improved since they last fought. But yeah, I, I think overall, Conor McGregor is probably the be- better striker of the two. I would agree with that. Yeah. Of course, the issue with Conor, as is always the case, is that he gasses hard. Yeah. So Conor McGregor, as I have determined it, um, has seven and a half minutes of pure magnificence and explosivity and power. And that, that's one and a half rounds. He gets into the second half of the second round and he fades. The power, the pop, the explosivity just, just goes downhill rapidly. And he typically doesn't knock people out after after that point. Um, the head movement starts to go, the movement, the lightness on his feet starts to go as well. And that's, particularly in a five round fight, that's where I start to get very worried for him. Yeah. Um, we all saw the, the, the fights with Nate Diaz. In the first fight, he got knackered. He got, he, he got choked out on the ground and gave up just because he was so exhausted. Yeah. In the second fight, which some people argue could have gone Nate Diaz's way, he was visibly tired. Same thing. Into the second round, he tired, he slowed down, 
And that was with him trying to pace himself. And that was with him uh, not having cut much weight, if any weight at all. And then, of course, in the third round, Nate Diaz takes over. That just by pure force of will, he probably took the fourth and fifth rounds just. Yeah. And he somehow managed to survive. But there are points in the fourth and fifth rounds in that Diaz fight where he was literally running away with his back turned to him because he was so tired. Mm. Um, so that makes me think, of course, if McGregor's going to win, he has to do it in the first or second round. Because poor Yeah, or maybe very good. early in the third, possibly. I don't think he's got it in him for a third no. KO. Um, so, yeah, probably not. Probably not. I don't think he's KO'd anyone after the second round. No, I don't think he has. Check here, actually. No, he's won a unanimous decision against Max Holloway, um, which went to the third round. But yeah, he's not KO'd anyone after the second round. Yeah, so I mean, we know that Poirier is gritty. It's tough, good cardio, and he'll be throwing a high output in the championship rounds. Um, so I think we have to assume that Conor McGregor will win rounds, assuming it goes to decision. McGregor wins rounds one and two. Poirier wins three, four, and five. Yeah, Poirier will take over. Yeah, that Middle round three could be up for grabs, but four and five, I'll bet the house on Poirier winning four and five. Yeah, because Conor argue well they say he he won round three against Khabib but Khabib's not the kind of striker that Poirier is and Khabib elected to stand with him um but yeah yeah that that that's a good point the other the other point we should we should add is um Poirier's been a lot more active than him I think Connor's had including May, the Mayweather fight three fights in four years Poirier's had about eight nine maybe mm-hmm so, well, do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing for Poirier? It could be both. It could be both, right? That's the thing. We don't know. He's been taking a lot of punishment as well. Um, I mean, Dan Hooker hit him 155 times. So, oh. uh, you know, Max Holloway hit him 181 times. Fuck, yeah. 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 That's the thing. Poirier gets into these wars. Exactly. Gaethje hit him 115 times. Ridiculous. Yeah. And that kind of leads me on to another point that I was thinking about. Because I believe McGregor came out and said in the press, I'm going to KO Dustin within 60 seconds. Yeah, he always says shit like that, though. And typically he does it. You know, most of the time he tends to do it. Yeah, I mean, bar, bar Nate Diaz, Khabib. Yeah. Sure. Other predictions he's got right, yeah. And in contrast, Dustin Poirier when asked how he was going to win, he says, I'll just take whatever opportunities arise, you know? So on the one hand, you know, you've got Conor McGregor who, who always has a game plan, always knows his edge, always knows his path to victory. Then Poirier, who just seems to just wade in and just get into a war with no clear way out. There's no particular game plan that we see from Dustin Poirier. And that, that worries me. If you don't really yeah. know what your edge is in this fight, how exactly you're going to win, what thing that you're going to do better than your opponent, it probably means that you don't necessarily have that edge. That worries me for Poirier a little bit. Because if he gets into a firefight in rounds one and two, Poirier is going to catch him. Uh, Connor. Yeah. Yeah, Connor's going to catch him. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if the, the, yeah, I, I completely agree when when they asked him you know what the game plan is and he he was like oh you know I want to bleed and I want to want to take him to d- into deep waters and stuff I was just thinking are you an, are you an idiot why would you want to do that against Connor that is you may as well just you may as well just forfeit the fight he, because he'll he'll catch him and he'll kick he'll KO him yeah yeah and that mentality is really stupid in very the stupid house. In the later rounds, it will serve him very well. Um, in the later rounds, yeah. Well, let me add a little bit of spice to this, as Eubank well, says. Well, well, you think maybe he's just saying this and actually has a completely different game plan? Because he's he's got a very good corner behind him. Matt Brown, you know, American top team. He trains with Masvidal, so on. And I've watched a lot of footage of him over the last, say, three, four weeks. He's really drilling his BJJ and wrestling hard. So, 
do you think maybe they're just saying that, saying we're going to get into a war with you and then he's going to come out and kind of grapple and clinch with him? Although I don't, you know, as we said before, a fighter who's had, who's had as many fights as him cannot just change for one fight automatically and start taking people down and so on. And Connor has actually got very good takedown defense. He does. He does. He stuffed uh, yeah. many of um, Khabib's takedowns, which is a, yeah. A well, what is his takedown defense? It's yeah, seventy percent. Uh, that, that's not bad, given he's he's fought you know Khabib. Yeah, it's very yeah. good. So the, I mean, so do we think Dustin Poirier might go for the takedowns? Yeah. Do you think he's got a completely different game plan? About? I don't think his takedowns are good enough. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think his takedowns are good enough as well. But I mean, if you get Connor in a clinch and push him up against the cage, you know, maybe some kind of foot sweep or something. There are other ways to take people down, right? You don't need to have, you don't need to take him down an open map. I mean, Poirier getting taken down McGregor against the cage. I don't see him doing a foot sweep. I don't think he's he's done a foot sweep before. He can go for the double leg. I think Connor's going to be wise to the double leg in the later rounds. If it goes in the later three, rounds, yeah, five, if it ties out, yeah, yeah. I mean, Diaz got a takedown in the second fight. Yeah, and he's not really a wrestler. Round. Oh. When, when, when Connor's knackered, anything can happen. Um, I don't. I don't necessarily see Poirier getting a takedown in rounds one or two. Yeah, but in round three. Round three, it's possible, and 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 he forgets if he gets him down, he he does have pretty good jujitsu. He has submitted people before. Yeah, I mean, Dustin Poirier is a black belt. McGregor's a brown belt. Is McGregor a brown belt? I didn't know that. Yeah. Trains with Dylan Dennis, who is a legit no gi guy. Yeah. People take the piss out of him, but he is a, a legit uh, grappler. Yeah, so Dustin's got four subs on his record. Yeah, mm. four subs, mainly DOS chokes and rear naked chokes. He, he is a black belt. Yeah, he has got subs. Um, and I would say probably on balance, based on limited information, because we don't really have this information, that Poirier's ground game is better than Connor's. Yeah, yeah, def- I, I would yeah, definitely say so. Yeah. But, you know, does that mean Poirier is going to switch this up and go from being a boxer, as he is in almost all of his fights? That's to, the thing. To being a grappler. Yeah. You know, fighters don't tend to just switch up their styles. Exactly. Uh, do, 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 do. So, I mean, if Poirier was sensible, he would avoid McGregor like the plague in rounds one and two. Yeah, uh, definitely. Stay outside, throw some blow kicks, the occasional jab, and get the fuck out of there. Then come or back clinch. And jab. Clinch, get him tired if he's yes. if he's capable of doing it. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's easier said than done because Poirier just kind of he plays his games. You know, he sticks his head out there, he sticks his hands out there. He looks like he's overstretched, like he did with Alvarez and so many other people. He thinks he's exposed. You think he's exposed, but in actual fact, he's not. And you go to hit him, and you know that then you get countered, and then you're knocked out. Uh, I mean, that breakdown Dan Hardy did on McGregor's game just reminded me just how sick McGregor is. No, McGregor's he, unbelievable. Uh, yeah. How he draws you into his, his range um, so he can count to you is it's majestic. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was shown by the Khabib fight. Khabib went for probably the safest single leg you can go for. Mm-hmm. You know, he just basically fell on the ground and grabbed his ankle because he knew he had to get him tied in the first and second round. Yeah. Well, Khabib, Khabib is such a such a pressure wrestler that he can get you tied in the first round. Mm-hmm. He got him tied in the first round, and then in the second round, basically the fight was over. But he knew he didn't he didn't want any of it because, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, what what about the what about? I'd be interested to know what you think about the weight cut because obviously he's going back down to one five five. The last fight he had was at one seventy. I think with with Mayweather he weighed he weighed in at over one seventy he was one seventy something. I mean he looks good. He looks. Uh, I, I was watching, um, you know, UFC countdown. He looks in, he looks trim. Looks in shape. But 
I, I think 155 is his natural weight class. Um, I don't think he's cutting a huge amount of weight to get there. Um, he's a big dude when he's walking around. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that long ago when he fought Alvarez. Um, when did he fight Alvarez? It's 2016, dude. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, that is. Yeah, well, I mean, Khabib was 155. Yeah, I don't so know if initially I think is, is, is better weight class. Um, I mean, he can't get it down to 145 anymore, I'm sure of it. No, no way. No way. Um, yeah, he'd be a He's skeleton. on the size for 170. Yeah, 155 is where it's at. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, for, for me, this just comes down to can Poirier survive rounds one and two? And we just don't. Yeah. If he is smart, I think he could. But Poirier is not the smartest fighter in the world. And what worries me no, about he Poirier, gets into wars. Yeah, like he did against Gaethje and Hooker. He could have been a lot smarter in both of those fights. Could yeah. have taken a lot less damage. Could have been a bit more calculated considering he had five rounds to work with. Um, yeah. I mean, so yeah. what, what, what's Poirier going to do? I mean, Poirier is probably going to engage and bang but, and box. That That's it. If you're smart, you know, he could hack at uh, Connor's lead leg because he leans pretty far forward on that in a traditional boxing stance. That would be his right leg, right? They're both southpaws. Sorry? That would be his, yeah, his right leg. They're both southpaws, right? Yeah. Yes. His right leg, yeah. Yeah, that would be a good game plan. But does he really kick to the legs? He doesn't really kick to the legs that much, poor eh? No, he tends to be the one getting kicked in the legs. Yeah, yeah. So stylistically, like this isn't great, this, for poor Ray. Yeah, it really isn't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, what we don't know, and what we'll decide this fight is, how long does this fight go? Yeah, definitely. Um, so what I might look at is a McGregor win within two rounds, or one and a half the rounds. Five. Or under 1.5. Okay. 1.5, because some sites do that. Yeah. And Poirier winning over, let's say, 2.5. 2.5, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think, yeah, I just think McGregor's the more advanced striker. And I think it's, it's kind of similar to, um, to the lead up to, obviously, this is more amplified because it's Conor McGregor, the biggest MMA star in the world. But similar to the amount of credit that people were giving Calvin Cater, and then you and I in the breakdown basically said he's pretty much got no chance yeah. once Max gets going. And look what happened. Yeah, it's like you all must have forgot, right? It's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think people have forgotten about McGregor. I mean, he got whooped by Mayweather, but, you know, possibly yeah. the greatest defensive boxer of all time. He got beaten, he got beaten by Khabib. Probably the best wrestler the UFC's ever seen. Like, yeah, this is, you know, yeah. So people see those fights and they think, oh, McGregor's not that great, you know. Yeah, and they look at the Diaz fights where McGregor's fighting a much bigger man, a lot bigger. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's like people just don't understand this stuff. And honestly, I mean, yeah, yeah, but people have just forgotten how good he is. Um, yeah, they don't know, understand what's going into that striking. So, so what what are your predictions, Walid? I've got. It's a tough one. I'm probably not going to put this in the in in the come comes. Um, but I've got. I might put it in the risky come come. Actually, I've got Conor McGregor. I've got Conor McGregor via TKO round two. KO, TKO, TKO. What's your confidence percentage? I'd say 60%. I think that's reasonable. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm going on the kind of, the Conor McGregor that came out last year against Cowboy. Uh, I just... The, the other thing that we should mention about Connor that isn't really related to MMA is no one really knows where his head's at, uh, where his head is at. You know, one minute he's 
doing something stupid. One minute he's attacking the press. He just went to Dubai and he bought a one million dollar watch. So he seems to be he seems to get distracted quite a lot now. But if it's anything like the old Conor McGregor, I've got yeah, I think sixty percent of the time he would win this fight. Okay. What odds do you think they're giving for McGregor? I mean, I'm guessing he's definitely favorite in this. Um, I don't know, minus 200 maybe. They're probably a bit gassed on him. Minus 300. Whoa. Whoa. I'd like to see more value okay. there. Yeah, yeah. That's... Uh... I think that's fair, and, and what? Yeah. What's the what? What are the odds of him getting a KO in round uh, a finish in round two? Can you check, please? Yep. Okay, Conor McGregor KO TKO round two. Uh, let me convert these odds. Plus four fifty. Okay, that's round two, bad. man. Picking a round between one and two is yeah. Uh, well, what about round one? Oh, this is interesting. Um, plus 180. Those odds are pretty shit. Very shit. So this is interesting because the odds makers are thinking that the odds of him winning as each round passes, it diminishes rapidly. Yeah, which, exactly which makes sense. Saying. So yeah. I think the odds makers are spot on with this. I think they yeah. zap, as they say. Um well, I might do a ten pound on round one, ten pound on round two. Um, well, Actually, making... five pound, five pound on round one, five pound on round two. That means I'll be making money either way. Are you sure? Does the maths add up there? Yeah, because if I put five pound on round one, what do I get? Oh no, no, no! It doesn't add up. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, mine to five. Yeah. Well, I'll just do five on round two. Getting five quid, then you're getting uh, well, you're betting ten quid in total. If option one comes in, uh, yeah, I make a slight loss. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, basically, there's no value there. That, that's that's the problem. No, um, it's yeah. I think those makers are are pretty spot on with this. So all the value lies with Dustin Poirier. Yeah. But, is something we can look at. So Poirier is plus 180. So wait, wait, sorry. Uh, yeah, plus 180 to win. Um, we can look at rounds for Poirier. Maybe method of victory as well, submission. Yeah, so Dustin Poirier KO round three is, ooh, you'll like this, Walid. What is it? My balls are tingling. Oh, 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 oh. Dustin Poirier has, KO. Has Connor been KO'd before? I think a, a, an Irishman KO'd him once. Before in Cage Warriors or something. Yeah. Back in the day. Um, yeah, so round four KO. 33 yeah. to one. Whoa, just put a pound each on, on all of yeah. the rounds. <laughs> Done. Round five, 40. You never know. It's MMA. It's like the, the, some of last week's results. I, you know... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, seriously, I would put, say, £2.50 on a Dustin Poirier KO in rounds three, four, and five. Yeah, yeah. Done. Yeah, you don't even need to worry about it. It's a tiny bet that could yield a, a very large result. Yeah. I mean, it's unlikely, but it's it's still possible. He hits hard. He's KO'd a lot of people. And Connor has been KO'd before. And Connor tires after round two, so... I mean, would it be a KO versus a submission? Um, what's what, what's it just for a finish? A Poirier finish. Let me have a look. Method of victory. Dustin Poirier by KO, TKO, 11 to 2, which is plus 550. That's also not bad. And that's, that's an implied bad, yeah. probability of 15.4 percent yeah and i think the chances of that happening are significantly greater i mean you're giving it 40 percent 
That's not bad. Yeah. But there's a ton of value there. Yeah. What about by submission? Poirier by Mish. Um, 12 to 1. 12 to 1. Wow. Those are good odds. That's plus 1,200. Yeah. That's crazy. Can have a bit of fun on, on that. So he's a massive, massive underdog. Huge. 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 Um, so, uh, but then again, I mean, Poirier for the risky gum gum, bear in mind, it's a risky gum gum. Yeah. Is not ridiculous at minus 300. Those are risky gum gum odds. Um, actually, no, they're not. That's, that's a safe gum gum odds, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'll have to think about this, but the, the, the poor odds are very interesting. Yeah, I mean, what you could do is you could put I mean, literally a pound on a, a Poirier finish, so a Poirier KO rounds three, four, and five, and a Poirier submission in rounds three, four, and five. You're investing six quid. In all of those scenarios, you're making many, many, many times your money back. Exactly. Very good point. And and maybe put Connor in the risky com com. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, again, mm. I'd I'd have to think about that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I can't really see. Yeah, I can't really see what else comes into this fight. I think, it, as as you said, it'll be it'll be a stand up, predominantly kickboxing boxing fight, and I think Connor still has the edge in that department. And they're they're both still relatively young. Has Poirier been banged, KO'd? Yeah, Poirier's been KO'd. I mean, by McGregor, sure, in yeah. fact. So. By, by McGregor, yeah. That's the, but that wasn't that bad. That was like one or two shots. That wasn't like career-changing. Um, he's been banged by Michael Johnson, Conor McGregor. He's been dust choked. And he got choked out by Khabib. So his chin's okay. Um, yeah, yeah. It's not cracked. But of course, Joe you know, one, the, one big thing we haven't really mentioned, apart from just there, is that McGregor has already beaten Poirier. Yeah, that's the thing. McGregor's already beaten him. Yeah, and in that fight, he looked very good. Uh, good side kicks, good spinning kicks, amazing counter punching. Um, Poirier tried hacking at his legs a bit, but didn't really work. Mm. McGregor caught him coming in finished him off very quickly round one yeah but yeah I, I yeah I'd, I'd say 60% Connor let me what odds did I say for a Connor KO in the first round let me have a look Oh, nine, nine great. to five. Yeah, that's yeah, not great. They weren't great. Yeah. That's. Da, da, da. Yeah. Plus round two was okay. Round two was a lot bigger. Yeah. A lot better. Yeah. Nine to two. That's not bad. Plus 450. Say, there's not a whole lot of value there. Um, no. Yeah. Really. I think that's quite possible, though. Connor round two KO. Yeah, so for me, the bets are going to have to be Poirier submissions in rounds three, four, and five. Yeah. Poirier KO three, four, and five. Very small bets in each. Yeah, small bets. And then I may put a small bet down on Connor round two KO as well. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Which would probably get you your money back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably exactly. sensible. Um, yeah, I think round one, I think Dustin's just too seasoned now to to be getting taken out in a round one. I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. I mean, my, my official prediction 
would be yeah. Connor, Bangs, Poirier, round one, KO. Yeah, no, I don't think that'll happen. I mean, it's, it's definitely possible, but... I, I think round I think round two, Connor. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if Dustin somehow won this fight. That wouldn't like that wouldn't be shocking to me. Yeah, no, of of course not. Of course not. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, bear in mind that Connor hasn't had many fights at uh, at lightweight. Yeah, well, yeah, he hasn't had many fights at lightweight. He's not been as active. He's, you know, had his ups and downs outside of MMA. Um, he's a lot more distracted than Dustin is. So Who's there are other factors in this as well. Sorry? Who's he actually fought at lightweight apart from Khabib? Um, Alvarez, Eddie Alvarez. Right? Alvarez, Khabib. That's it. Yeah. Because he won the featherweight belt. Then he fought on the featherweight the belt. belt took then that. he fought Eddie Alvarez, and then he fucked off, I believe. Uh, let's yeah. check that. Uh, so, yeah, Eddie Alvarez. Then he went on to fight Mayweather, came back, and Khabib, Khabib won. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. Just, just Eddie Alvarez. Yeah. I mean, he banged Alvarez, dude. Alvarez he banged him. He banged him. Boxer. Yeah, he banged Al him. Yeah, Alvarez is sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, levels, man. Yeah. McGregor, McGregor wins 65% of the time, in my opinion. Fair enough. So I've got 60%, you've got 65%. Um, that's it, really. I don't think there's much, much more to say about this one, apart from people have forgotten how good McGregor is. Yeah, I mean, the it's easy... I mean, the MMA, MMA media and fans are basically retards. <laughs> as much as we love this sport, this sport is just full of morons who are yeah. uh, about, about fighting. Um, yeah, they just don't do the analysis. That's what it is. Well, they just don't like, understand. Like we do. Yeah, yeah, they don't understand the techniques. They don't put the time into reading, in, into watching the fights and breaking them down. They just don't understand. Yeah. I mean, you, you get some idiots who... who who, who's never boxed, never done anything relating yeah. to that sport. And I think, oh, yeah, McGregor's done because they saw yeah. Khabib choke him out. Oh, he sucks. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's the level of their analysis. Right? Or Khabib, uh, Khabib, Khabib dropped him with an overhand, so he's boxing shit, not realizing that Connor was worried about the takedown throughout the whole fight. So yes. that adds a completely different element to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, as you said, they just people just don't understand how good his striking is, and this is going to be a striking, striking, striking battle. Yeah, but I would recommend everybody watch that Dan Hardy breakdown of Conor McGregor. Um, yeah, Dan Hardy's good at that shit. He's really good at that stuff. He really is. Yeah, he really yeah. is. It takes a very I, I good think... eye and a lot of experience to, to understand what exactly a fighter is doing when yeah. they're doing traps, because th these things are very, very subtle. Uh, things like feints and you know trying to get people to come in it's yeah it's very difficult to see yeah he's not so good at the wrestling stuff um i think dc is very good at that because obviously he's a wrestler yeah well yeah. they're not english so obviously his wrestling yeah. sucks yeah it probably yeah it probably doesn't know what wrestling is <laughs> just gets into bar fights on weekends by the um, way what happened to dan hardy's return to the octagon that fizzled out pretty quick Oh, yeah. Who did he want to fight? Carlos Condit. Probably not a good idea. <laughs> Condit still looks okay. He does, yeah. He would bang Hardy again, I think. <laughs> yeah, but if he comes back, that just makes a joke of that division. Like you got you know, Matt Brown, Carlos Condit, Dan Hardy. Yeah, Matt Brown needs to just fucking leave, man. It's Seriously. like the veterans version of the welterweight division. You know, yeah. Uh, used to be good, who are just still Con hanging around. Condit's on a two-fight win streak, though, so... Uh... But I think his UFC contract's expired, so he's probably going to fuck off to Bellator or something. No, I saw a thing with uh, Dana White. I think Dana White wants to re-sign him. Oh, really? Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Who, who did yeah. Carlos Condit fight in his first comeback fight? I can't remember now. I can't remember. It mm. wasn't anyone good, but he won. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, somehow making a career comeback. Yeah. Good for him. 
He'll get banged soon, though. He's too old. For sure. He's not actually old. He's 36. That's still pretty old. I, I think it's more the uh, the time off and the relative and, lack of ability at this level. And the losses. Yeah. I think he, he got banged a few times. That adds up. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Matt Brown just needs to, you know, great guy, great guy, but he just needs to leave. Yeah. Just create some space for some new blood, man. Like, why are these guys still hanging around? Yeah. Fucking. Yeah. Fuck, fuck off. Um, fuck you. Go home. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Yeah. He seems like a nice guy. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, that's it. So, everybody, watch the Dan Hardy breakdown of the Conor McGregor fight as well. Um, does a good job. For us, Sahabi did a good breakdown too, but it was brief, probably about 10 minutes. Um, I've got Conor McGregor 60-40. I think Conor will probably KO Poirier or TKO him in the second. However, as I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Dustin uh, wins this fight. So, I... Not sure about putting it in the come comes, but we've gone through a number of ways that you can bet on this. Uh, so there's some great value in Poirier in this, so uh, go you know go through the betting lines and see see what you can uh, make of it. And Andrew, yeah, I mean, all, all, all I would say is just reiterate what you said. Exactly, that's it. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, you're more confident that McGregor wins. I mean, marginally. I mean, you know, but yeah, yeah, 60, 40, 65, 35, Connor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, stay tuned. We are doing more more fights very soon. Um, I think, what, what's the co main for this? Chandler, right? Oh, that's yeah, it's sick. Chandler. Sorry? It's such a sick card, man. Uh, those two fights. Yeah. That's the co main. Yes. Yeah, it's Chandler. Yeah, it's Chandler. Yeah. 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 Chandler, Dan Hooker. That would be good. But um, yeah. Please do like, please subscribe, leave any comments. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.